and I'm grateful for, definitely for the longevity of my career because you don't think about it until people ask, you know, like the, like this, in my 16th year come up just at the Luxor. People are like, what? And I'm like, yeah, well, it's 35, I started in 1985. Thank you so much for coming by. Yeah, thanks. This is a pleasure. Beautiful uh, studio. My Very goodness. nice, yeah. right? I can draw a crowd. Look at that. Look, oh my gosh, there, <laughs> there's so many people here. Hey, back off. I might break the glass. How many photos, though, did you pose for on the way over here? A, a few. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. People are well, nice. The, I mean, I stand out like a sore thumb. It's like, well, this is the thing. Like, nobody else looks like you. This is true, which is a blessing and a curse. I'm, I'm screwed in the lineup, for like, sure. Like, there's other people you could be like, oh, is that? I don't know. Is yeah, that this person or that yeah, person? Yeah, I do have a distinctive, uh, like I said, it's good and bad. I, I, uh, Halloween, some dude's like, that's a pretty good carrot top. If you were a little taller and a little more muscular, you'd nail it. And I was like, not really? <laughs> so I literally said that. I, that said, I said, yeah, I'm all, yeah. It's a pretty good carrot top. I can't. Oh, oh my God! Or did they go? Oh, that's a really good Kathy Griffin. Nice <laughs> Kathy Griffin. Yeah, we had a whole thing with that. Her, yeah. I, which is funny. You saw it maybe. I saw her, it. Yeah, with her boobs out and it says "Hello, boys." And so I, it was a shot from behind, but you just yeah, see her hair. The hair. So they thought, well, of course you think. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Thank you so much for coming by. Um, yeah, you were like a me. Vegas staple. So. Right. Today is our first day of filming Insight here oh, nice. in oh, Las oh, Vegas. Nice. Oh, yeah. cool. Oh, good. So it makes sense to have a Vegas <clears throat> staple here like you. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's, we've been here for many, many years. It's crazy. We've been lucky. Is it 15 years? Well, 16 at the Luxor and then prior to that at the MGM for 10 and Bally's 1. So it's been, it's been a lot of years. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. When you first got approached with the idea of doing a residency... Was there any sort of apprehension? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I was, I was terrified, and I said no. Actually, really? And uh, yeah, I was a road guy, and then uh, we would come in and do like, like a, what they call now residencies, which is a week or two. A residency is what I do. We do two hundred fifty shows. That's a residency. <laughs> but people come in and do weekends. They now call it residencies. But when I when I started, uh, we'd do like about two weeks and then go on the road, come back every three or four months, do yeah. two weeks and go. So it was kind of an in and out residency. Um, and they offered me the full-time gig, and I was like, no, I'm not doing that. Um, I'm a road guy, you know? Yeah. And so I took it, and then uh, now I can't imagine not doing it. I, you know, there's nothing else I'd rather do than Vegas. And uh, we, we are doing some road shows coming up in December, but only like five or six. You know, it's not a lot. So it's like you get to, like, whet that appetite. So Yeah, you get a little, exactly. And it keeps you, keeps you fresh on the road. You got to, you know, road shows a lot different than a, than a Vegas show. Yeah, how's the audience at a Vegas show? Oh, you know, it's it's great. I mean, I've, I've built I've done this so long, so I can't. I built in an audience, so I think I'm lucky in that regard. Where sure. I get people that actually come to see me, whereas you know, back in the day when I first started, they were like, you know, we can't get into Cirque du Soleil, we can't get into Thunder from Down Under. Let's go see Carrot Top. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, but it, I'm built, I still have people. I say every day, how, how many people have never seen my show? And it's a, a lot of people have never seen the show. So it's no way. Fun. So it's fun to kind of to uh, get those new people, fans, you know. And when most people leave your show for the first time, and they're like, "Oh my God, I can't believe I've never seen Carrot Top before." Yeah, yeah well, yeah. If, if they haven't, I mean, yeah, a lot of people have. We do have a lot of return visitors and fans, like I said, that since I've doing it so long. But it's fun to get the new people. It is fun because you like you get to, you get to turn them. You know, they they like they have no idea what they're in for. Yeah. Uh, and the show's a lot different than I think than what they would ne normally think for a stand up show, stand up comedy. Isn't it? You know, there's video, there's lights, there's snow machines, there's, you know, there's so many uh, bells and whistles that, that go on during the yeah. show, so it makes it fun. After all this time, <clears throat> what do you still get out of it? Nothing. <laughs> um, no, I get, uh, yeah, no, yeah, I, get, I, it, get, yeah. I get, I get, I get, yeah, I get, no, I get the same thing that the audience, I think, does. I mean, it's a rush. I mean, that's what's great about live uh, performance is that you get to feed off the energy of the crowd, so every night you get, you get that same uh, feedback and the same kind of energy, and uh, it's yeah, you it's, 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 after the show, it's, it is a coming down uh, process that happens. That uh, yeah, and it's fun to you know every night I get a, I get a chance to uh, to try new things. I mean, we just did a Halloween bit last night, you know, because Halloween is funny one night, but um, it gives me the chance to kind of play a little bit each night too. Having a show every night, you kind of have that luxury of kind of well, I always I've always tried new jokes. I've never been one of those that. I just do it. If it eats, if it eats it, then I'd eat it. And sometimes you'll eat it a lot, and I just keep doing it. But do you ever like believe in a joke so much that you're like, okay, it didn't work for this crowd, but oh, absolutely, gonna try it. Tomorrow. Oh, absolutely, it's not a comic living that doesn't have that theory. I mean, you know, in your brain, it's funny, and then you do it. If it doesn't do well, then you. I, sometimes I'll do it for months <laughs> if it doesn't do well, 
And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I believe in this joke. So, um, and then some that are instantly hit. Um, like I know in my heart, like oh, this is gonna kill. It, I just did it. It was brand new two nights ago. It was a uh, that 23 and Me thing where you check your ancestry. So yeah. I said, I checked mine. Did you see mine? And there's a big screen like this behind me, and it, it's got it's got a chart graph, and it's got Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's, you know, the <laughs> icons. That's that's my 23 and Me. So I'm all the I'm all the fast food guys. <laughs> they all have red hair. It's creepy. What does the genesis of a joke look like for you? Well, you know, they're all, well, there's, there's always that, you know, if there's a core, if it's funny or not, I mean, there's a, something that you, you, you see and like, like that, I'm, I was just watching TV and I thought every hamburger chain has a redhead in it. So I just thought, yeah, why is that? I don't know. I, well, someone told me that red and yellow makes you hungry. And I said, I've never had someone around me think I'm starving when they hang around me. <laughs> <laughs> red, but, um, or maybe they are, or they're horny. They're either hungry or horny, mm. but, um. That's what someone told me. But uh, yeah, the, the, the whole idea of, a, of any kind of joke, whether it's a stand-up joke or it's a prop, uh, there's, you know, there's got to be a beginning and an end. Uh, there's got to be something funny. It's got to be, I think, clever in a sense. I, you know, I try to keep the show pretty clear. The, the Halloween one was pretty funny. I said, can you give out candy anymore because of the COVID? So I played it safe this year, and I just gave out COVID shots. So I had the little <laughs> pumpkin with the little syringe. Here you go, Barney. You ready for your booster? And um, and then so this is funny already. It's current. It's funny. It's, yeah. it's brand new. Halloween, COVID. Um, and then I said, remember, if you don't feel good in about an hour or two, it's from the candy, not the shot I gave you. <laughs> so it ends with a you know you start, then there's a beginning, and then there's a nice big punch on yeah. the end. So yeah. are you physically writing down these jokes? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? yeah. Or are you writing them in your iPhone or what is it? No, I still am old school. I write in a, in a pad and a paper and napkins. Yeah. I just had a little bit of a bite to eat for here, and I was writing things in on napkins. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. So do you just have like a pile of napkins or? I, yes, I, yes. It's, no, it's serious. People said, you have an iPad, right? And I said, no, I don't. I really, I've never worked on a computer in my life. I just do everything on scratch paper still. Wow. I'm old, by the way. You still so look I don't, great, though. Thank you. It's the lighting in here. We, we, we softened we, all the camera. You have angle. great lighting in here. <laughs> it does. Damn, I look good. When, when you got super jacked, mm. what, how did this? Like, it was like two hours ago, by the way. <laughs> I mean, you still are in great yeah, shape, I'm still, gee, I try but to. I think that I think that for like the public perception of you is one way, yeah. and then these photos showed up where you were like huge. Well, some of them were altered. I think. I mean, it was as big, and people, in fact, people always still say, "I thought you were bigger." I'm like, "Yeah, I, me too." But um, <laughs> yeah, I, how are you supposed to respond? Well, I think a lot. That? I know they, you're a lot better. Yeah, you're a lot better looking in person than you are. And I get that. I got that at a Raiders game last time. Oh, nice. like you look really good in person, by the way. I'm like, oh, great. How do we look like on TV? Shit, hell, you look <laughs> like crap, pretty much. But uh, yeah, the the whole. I mean, I've always worked out and ran, swam. I was a wrestler, swimming when I was 12. Um, and I think when I got the full time gig at the uh, at the Luxor is when I started. Just I had nothing else to do all day long, so I would. I'd go to the gym and just hit the gym every day, and then I just was like, what? And I'm big, so I just completely just stopped, like cold turkey, and just started running. So now I, I run about five miles a day. I still lift a little, but not like, not even close to, yeah. I just, so I just you got to, to a point where you were like, ah, I don't like the way this looks? Yeah, I was just kind of, for, and especially on stage, it was just, it, was take, it would take away from, you know, it was comedy. It, you know, you're a skinny guy with freckles and red hair and big hair is... Uh, is what you know should be based on, and the, the, when people would see me, the first thing they say is, "Wow, you work out." Then you know you you work out too much. So, oh, yeah. Well, that's what I thought. They wouldn't say, "Wow, you're funny." They say, "Wow, you really work out." And so I thought that's taking away from my. my and I'm really kind of honestly just like a skinny guy. I, 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 always, I was only in that phase where I was pretty jacked up for about two years, and then I. Eh, but dude, when you look at those photos, fabulous. You were jacked, <laughs> Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Some if you if you. Yeah. Stopped working out cold turkey. Was there ever a point where you thought to yourself, maybe I should shave my head? No, there's never been. Uh, I've shaved my balls, but never my head. <laughs> never my head. Um, yeah, no, I've always loved my hair. I've always loved having hair. It's like my, it's my thing. It's my, it's my power. You know, can't get rid of your hair. You're like Samson. Uh, right. Uh, and people say, would you cut it for a movie? And I said, well, of course I would. But nowadays they can, of course, just, you know, there's no such thing as having to shave your head for a movie. They can CGI it and they can... Yeah. Ball cap and whatever. Like Henry Cavill's mustache when he was Superman. Yes. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Indeed. But I saw recently that Sean White was sharing a story. Where yes, he was. Yeah. He got rid of his hair. He did. I told him not. I said, don't do it. He said, he said in his thing that I told him 
he should cut his hair because he still has. And I said, don't. I said, that's that's your keep your hair. That's your that's your thing. Um, but he was telling the story like you should probably. You were saying to him, you should cut your hair because you don't want this to be your thing. Yeah, I don't remember now. I remember speaking to him a few times. Yeah, uh, but I just said, you know, dude, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta stay in the hair club. You can't, you know. I think I might have been kidding when I said you still have time to not get s- stuck in this. Is right. Maybe I might have said something like that. But you know, it's it's okay. I, I like being I like being uh, I like being this. This is good. No, this I can't imagine not having hair. So it's w- good. When do you think? Like, there was a point in your career, with, with great respect for you, where you were like the punchline of a lot of jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I feel like it came back around, where like it wasn't funny anymore. Yeah, a friend of mine had said something kind of. Funny, he said, uh, to, to make fun of Carrot Top is kind of hack. Mm. Because, uh, you know, because it used to be, it's funny, but now 36 years doing it, it's kind of like, you can't really quite make that much fun of you because you've been successful 36 years. So you kind of, yeah. you know, you're finally allowed to go to the barbecue, you know. Um, but for, yeah, for, for many years, and I think it was because when I first started out, people, you know, I worked, I worked for years. People just, I just came on the scene and people thought that I was overnight, you know, hit. Uh, Especially doing something different with the props, and they were just they they just they just wanted to not like well not just not not everybody. That was what I what I used to what survived me through all the poking fun of days was my mom would always have a, a, when I was a kid even I get picked on at school for having red hair and freckles and skinny. Um, I would say you know everyone's making fun of me. Who's making fun of you? I said so and so. Consider the source. Mm-hmm. And so I've always that's always been a big thing for me in my in my life. Considering the source of where it's coming from. So, you know the comics or people that were making fun of me weren't people that I would really give a two rats about because they weren't you know like Jay Leno loved me and Bill Maher loved me and you know Chris Rock and you know Dave Chappelle. They're all friends of mine. So yeah. they respected me and loved me and that was more important that they enjoyed me and appreciated uh, my style of comedy uh, more than, you know, some guy living in Arkansas that just pissed off that Carrot Top's on The Tonight Show again. Right. There's nothing I can do about it. So, yeah, it, it's like with anything. With any kind of art, I think you just try to please the people that are your fans, you know, whether it's in music or sports. I mean, you know, people hate Tom Brady. Well, you know what? <laughs> you know, a lot of people love him. So, you know, it's, it's, it's always, you know, you're going to have haters and you're always going to have, no matter what you're in, I feel like if Tom Brady joined us right now yeah. for a conversation, you'd be like, yeah. "Man, it's really hard to dislike this guy." Yeah, well, Tom Brady, yeah, yeah, yeah of course. I mean, I think that's what I think that's like that with anybody, though. Uh, I, there's been people that I was like, eh, "I'm not sure," and then I would meet him somewhere at a party, or we meet him at a red carpet, and I'm like, "That guy was really, really sweet." Really yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah. yeah. I feel like nobody that's doing less than you is ever going to like make fun. and no one that's doing more than you is ever going to Right, make right, fun right. Of. Well, sure. That's and that, that's that goes back to my my theory on uh, especially, you know, at the end of the day too is you you believing in your own craft. Yeah. Like I'm pretty I'm pretty proud of like that Halloween joke. I mean, that's like it's it's it was it's you know, it's, it's you can't be any more current. Yeah. It's Halloween the first year of Halloween with COVID, so I came up with a clever bit. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a uh, you know, my props are like my songs in a sense. So, yeah. You know, you look back at your, 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 what do you call it, catalog of years of props and jokes, and, you, you know, you sit back and go, oh, I'm pretty proud of that. You yeah. know, like, the answer to you one is a couple of days ago. That's, you know, it's current. It's new. So um, uh, try to keep it going, you know. And so I, I pride myself on that, too, that, like, always writing a new joke yeah. or a new prop or, or, or bit. You know, the show has a lot of... Um, which is another thing I learned uh, with just doing it for so long. My sound guy, I believe, or my lighting guy, believe it or not, one day said to me, you know, that big screen you have behind you, um, I just had my logo on it the whole show, which is, I used to, you know, I was a marketing major, so that's another reason why the whole care job, and there was always a logo when people would leave the comedy club and say, who do you remember seeing? And they said, well, the guy, Carrot Top, because it, it was in their head, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but my lighting guy says, you know, why don't you use that screen for emphasis for jokes? And so I said, what do you mean? And he's like, you know, like I, I did a Michael Jackson joke, and I, and then I would have his thing, and I'd say, got your nose, and I'd grab his nose, and his nose would go away. But it was like, then I started thinking, oh, no, now this is going to, you created a monster. So now the live show probably has, oh, God, 200 or more video jokes. Uh, so I don't even have to do the joke with the prop or the stand-up. It could be both. It could be a video joke, like yeah. like like the... 21 and me 
that's a total video joke. Yeah. Um, and then I'll do, you know, every other every other third joke is probably something on the big screen. Yeah. So there's a, there's like a multimedia thing happening in the show, so it's kind of hard not to. You're always it's either a boom prop or a stand up yeah. or a song or a thing, and so kind of all comes together. If we take this way back, mm. who was the first person that you ever made laugh? The first person I made laugh, probably my, my mom, maybe. My mom, she always said, you're funny. Um, and then, of course, as, as, the, as it went on, I, I would make my, my friends at school. Uh, my dad had a great sense of humor and a great uh, timing is what I was. My dad was very, very funny in a, in a way that was just his dry. He was very dry. He wasn't at all outgoing, um, loud. Like, he just would have this timing, and I used to when he would tell his jokes in the cul-de-sac with all our neighbors, I would go back to school the next day and try to recreate what he told and remember mm. it. And of course, some weren't, you know, weren't bad jokes and I get in trouble. I'm like, did you <laughs> tell the school this joke? I'm like, mm. um, but I remember my first, I remember my first joke that I wrote when I was, uh, I wouldn't say first joke, but it was one of the very first things that I, I came up with. Uh, I was probably 10 or 11 and we were having a, campfire on the beach in Jacksonville, Florida. And it was like 20 kids and me, and I was the oldest one. And this, this police officers came out and they said, you can't have a fire on the beach. You got to put this out. Yeah. And I said, why? We're next to two things that put fires out, water and sand. Where, where's a safer place to have a fire? And they just looked at me like, are you, are you, like, you trying to be funny? And I'm like, well, I'm not, but all my friends were like, that's pretty clever. Like, you're right. Like, where else? Would get, what, you want to take it in the woods? We just know where to put a fire out. <laughs> this was on the beach. Yeah. Water and sand. There's nothing that could possibly go wrong. Right. And so I started thinking of those kind of observational uh, jokes, and in a sense a joke, uh, storytelling. And then, uh, and that's what I, I always admired comics that had that kind of material where you're, it's like, when you watch a show, you're like, oh, my God, that happened to me. Or, oh, my God, I, I see that, too. So observational right. things. Yeah. You know, Gallagher was always great about that. He'd have jokes like, you know, why do they call it a parkway? Why do they call it a parkway? And you park on the driveway and drive on the parkway. And yeah. why do they call them buildings when they're done building? And they should be called built. And he had all these, uh, all these really great, like, uh, smart stuff. And then I, I, wrote, I wrote him one. Uh, it was a, I was probably 14, and, and it was here in Vegas, actually. And we were going to, he was performing, and there was a big door, a big, like a backstage do door, and it said, this door must remain closed at all times. And he was banging <laughs> on it, trying to get in to, to do the show. And I said, why, why is there even a door? If it's supposed to remain closed at all times, why have a door there? And he looked at me, and he says, that's a great joke. Is that yours? I said, well, I, yeah, I, mean, I just wrote it. I just thought of it. But um, so that's always kind of like the process of how um, I try to do, uh, where it's a little clever, it's a little... Uh, most of the stuff. I mean, there's other stuff that, that takes a different path, but yeah. As long as it's funny. Funny's funny is good. But there's also a lot of your... I think everyone thinks that you're just a prop comic. Right. And then the, they come to your show and they go, oh my gosh, yeah, no, there's no, a lot of stand-up. There's a lot of stand-up, yeah. yeah. There's more than there ever has been right now, yeah. Is there always? Is there one guy in the back who's like, bring out a prop? No, I don't think so, because there's enough of that going on. I mean, there's still props, but uh, no. They, they, I, I, I think I've... I think, we'll find out, but I think I've got it all kind of... Um, laid out where there's, yeah. there's some props and there's stand-up there's some props and there's some stand-up and then there's this there's that and then there's music at the end and people hopefully have fun and i think it takes a lot of balls to get on stage for the first time oh so, yeah so yeah. when you went like how did you convince yourself i'm funny enough that i'm going to be able to get up in front of a room of people and i'm going to make them laugh at my stories i really don't know i mean it's been that long i, I remember the day i did it was in my college and i uh i went to um the dorm, uh, or the, the rat scale, it was called. It was like a, a bar where we had lunch and whatever. And they had an open mic yeah. night. And uh, I didn't even know what that was. And my, my neighbors, or neighbors, my roommates came back with this flyer and said, hey, let's, we should go to this. And my, neighbor, my roommate said, go to it. You should be in it. And I was like, be in it? What am I going to, I don't know how to, what am I going to sing? What am I going to, I don't know, play an instrument. I'm going to sing, a, tell poetry. He said, no, t tell jokes. And I was like, I don't know. I don't have you see, you, all the jokes you tell us go up into so I said oh I could just go up and tell like my dad did old jokes yeah so I, I just went up and I said these are my you know the guy walks in a bar a rooster and a hen whatever the, the jokes were and um, it did great I felt I felt comfortable up there doing it 
and then the next year every semester or whatever they'd have another one and so I kept getting into it and like the third time I thought you know I should probably write my own jokes for this instead of do old jokes yeah so I might have done a few and then ended on an old joke just so I had an ending and so that's what I did. I made fun of the school and I made fun of the parking and I made fun of one of our teachers that was, everyone knew, uh, joked about books, everything that we had to do in college and it killed. And then I went to the local comedy club and, and they had an open mic there. So I went and I auditioned and the lady was like, you are funny, but I don't think, well, wait, you're talking about a college. I don't think, you know, this is yeah. a diverse crowd we're not gonna i don't think your college jokes are gonna like talking about parking at your college is not gonna get a, and she had a good point though right sure so, yeah no, so i said audience. i gotta you know your audience. you have to widen widen your 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 audience and what you're gonna talk about and so that's when the props came in i had a uh, a neighborhood crime watch sign that i that i'd stolen it was on my dorm and uh i was in my dorm room and i was i actually had drawn a logo i already had carrot top logo drawn and my roommate said, what's that? I said, it's my logo. He said, oh, is that for one of your classes? That's a good logo. I said, no, it's from when I'm a comedian. He said, what? I said, yeah, I already have the logo. The hard part's done. I mean, now I just got to write an act. But I got the logo. <laughs> yeah, that's the hard part. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the hard part's the logo. Yeah, so yeah. so I, I told Oprah this. I, she literally was, she said, I said, I had, an, I had a logo before I had an act, which was true. But then I thought the crime watch sign would, might be a funny opening. So I walked on stage and I said, sorry, I'm late. I was in the neighborhood and it killed. And I said, how good is your crime watch? You're not watching your signs. <laughs> I mean, the house takes 20 seconds to break into. It took me three days to get this sign. So it was the first prop and then it, it, it was really good. And then the lady said, could you do more of that? Mm. And I said, what, steal more signs? And she <laughs> goes, yeah. And I said, okay, I can steal more signs. So I started going around town stealing more signs and I came up with like 10 different signs and that was my whole, it was almost like a slideshow. One was Butts Road, it was right through the town I lived and I said, this is where all the assholes live. And uh, it killed, it killed, killed. And so then she's, she's like, this is great. And that's how the props came in. Yeah, her name's Colin McGar. And then I started coming up with like, you know, a boot with a kickstand for rednecks don't fall down when they're drunk and I had an ice tray with a level on it and I just started, yeah. I just started coming up with all these props. I had like a whole, and the more props that I could come up with and, and you know, the more time I could do. And so uh, the key was to kind of get, you know, all good in there and not have, you know, like four good ones and seven crappy ones. So it took a long time to get, you know, a solid enough time where I could open up for, for you know, for other comics. And then that's what I started doing in other, opening for like comics and bands. And then I yeah. like Brooks and Dunn and, and whatnot. So. But you knew pretty early on that you were going to do this for a living. Well, I wanted to do when I was a, when I was a kid. I definitely thought like even on the beach, but I didn't think there was such a thing as just I'm going to be a comic. Yeah, I'm just going to tell jokes. For yeah, a I mean, yeah. You, you know, and my parents even were like, "You're going, you're, you're doing what?" And I said, I'm, "You know, I'm a comedian." And they're like, well, "You're not funny." I'm like, "I know, but you got to come see the show." And uh, my dad came down to the college and was like, "Where did this come?" Because I'm really kind of shy and quiet, and all of a sudden you hit the stage, it's a whole different kind of, you know, it's 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 manic, but. Uh, he was like, "That's that, you're really good, you know. You uh, you wrote all this yeah. stuff yourself." And I yeah. said, "Yeah." So then I had, you know, I just had hundreds and hundreds of thousands now of, of different props. Some, of course, have been retired to the warehouse. They, they you know, there's top, there's shelf life to props, you know. Sure, you can't um, be telling a Bill Clinton. I had, a, yeah, I had some joke. great Bill Clinton jokes. And I, I remember a, seeing the that podium on Leno. with the yeah, yeah, uh. the podium with the Monica Lewinsky that came up. Uh, <laughs> not now. Um, it was great. That was one of my favorite Tonight shows because the, the lady that was in charge of uh, standards and practices said, uh, you know, you, you, you can't put your hand, physically put your hand on a woman, like force her down, you know. Sure. And I said, well, there's no, there's no joke then. I mean, the joke is she pops up. And he's like, I did not have, not yet. <laughs> and it would kill, right? So he said, you can't use your hand. And this is the last joke on the Tonight Show. I'm killing, and I get to that that joke, and I'm thinking, what do I do? So I instead, of, I didn't, I used my elbow <laughs> and not my hand. Well, you and they yelled, use your hand. You yeah. I said, you said don't use your hand. She said, I said don't physically put her. I said, well, anyway, and they, it killed, and I got out of there alive, but uh, <laughs> I got in trouble. Was the Tonight Show and Jay Leno what really brought you to that next level with your career? Well, he gave me a lot of opportunity. I mean, he was yeah. very, very, very... You were on the show how many times? Oh, 30-something, yeah. That's I mean, insane. I was I was always... They, they loved me there, and I loved them. They were. They, in fact, I didn't even have to... I would just call them and say, I have a spot, I have a set. And this is back when people watch TV right. a lot more Little, frequently. Oh, no, I mean, yeah. you could probably... If a young comic now could do The Tonight Show 75 times, and they're not going to know who you are. Yeah. 
Um, but and I got lucky at the end of that bubble. I mean, prior to that, prior to when I was doing all those shows, you know, Regis and Tonight Shows and whatever, there was still um, a lot of a lot of people watching those shows. Whereas now, it, it I don't even know. I don't. I, I haven't. I don't even watch television anymore. I don't. I haven't seen the Tonight Show or. Uh, literally oh it's changed so I much don't, i just don't uh, i don't i don't tune in much anymore but um have you been on it at all since jimmy fallon's on there no oh i know i know jimmy yeah um and i know i know i know all of them i mean yeah, of jimmy course Colbert and, they're, and, and, they're all uh, comedians jimmy kimmel we're all friends um, all comedians seem to know each other yeah i mean it's a small it's a small group, uh, yeah. yeah i mean it's a fraternity for sure and and, and usually a lot of times is uh, is because of especially back when I lived in LA, um, you know that's where you, everyone knew everybody from. Uh, yeah, they can hear us out there. By the way, oh I my like gosh, it. I'm getting, wow. I'm getting a little thigh action. You are, definitely are. Wow, okay, <laughs> and this is in the middle of the day. Wow. All right. Wow. There you go. What would happen if we were recording at night? Mm. Jeez. We should we should we should meet back here in a couple hours. I guess so. But after, uh, after your show, yeah, after my show, <laughs> but. Uh, it's usually a guy. Thank God it was a woman this time. <laughs> it's usually a guy showing me his boobs. <laughs> okay, Bill. But uh, oh, but going back to that. So there's a camaraderie because you, in the clubs, the club scene. You know, there's it, at one night there could be you know 75 to 100 comics and at the comic strip or the comedy, you know, the improv, and so everyone knows everybody. And there was a, there, you know, there's, it's definitely like a little fraternity. Yeah. Um, in fact, just the other day, someone was asking me about you know new up and coming comers, and I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm not in the scene anymore. Like I have my show in Vegas, so yeah, I go yeah. into the show and I go home, and then I don't, I don't like I used to go to the comedy club, sit in the back and watch all these new, you know, newcomers, new comics, and just be wow, these guys are really good, you know, sure. they, 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 they craft watching young. I love watching, of course, everyone likes some a young comic that's funny and new and, and on the scene. I went trying to find one that I could mentor. You know, I need a. There's no. Pro, there's no more prop comics. <laughs> I think I'm the la, the last dying breed of a prop comic. Oh look, yep. Yeah, see, right. now I'm drawing a crowd. Everybody loves Carrot Top. It's great. There needs to be the next Carrot Top. I know. I say that all the time. There's no prop. There's no new Carrot Top on well, the scene be, that I know. That's because you've mastered the. Is art. that what it is? Yeah. Well, come on. Come on. <laughs> How could somebody possibly top what you've done? I don't even mean to do that with Top. It would be fun to see. It would be fun to see somebody, but. Uh, um, and the the style of props too is, is different. So I I, uh, I never went the pun route. I never said everything's like has a has kind of a an underlining uh, cleverness to it as opposed to a play on words. Like one of my favorite props, George Carlin uh, came up to me and said, "That's funny." Uh, was a paper cups and string phone. You know the kids have the cups. Yeah, yeah. So I said this is about 20 years ago. I said they should make a new version of this, the cups and string f for nowadays, for now, you know, for 2000, whatever it was. And it was a, a second cup that came out of, for call waiting, <laughs> and then a, and then other cup for conference calling, and then it was a clear cup for caller ID. And it was it was really <laughs> it was like my closing bit forever and ever. Killed, killed. And George Carlin was like, "That's funny shit, man." And you know, I was like, he's like, "That's." fucking clever so it's, it's always like that it's, i always try to make something i mean it usually has to have a little bit of a cleverness to the yeah. the prop as opposed to saying you know it's a shoehorn or it's a i don't do the the do seesaw the, yeah see now this yeah and i was right? very okay so i fought that the family guy thing they called me up and they said uh you want to be on the fam we have this thing and we're gonna do you want to do the voice for it and i said well why would you have someone else do my voice i said let me let me be me yeah so they sent me the script, and I remember going into a studio here in Vegas, and I, I just, I was so, um, just, it, I hated it. And so they get on the phone with me, and he's like, thanks for doing it. And I said, I, can, can we do another line? I don't, the seesaw is really just not my, that's not my, it's not my thing. And he's like, you can hear like literally a whole room full of people, like, what do you mean your thing? I'm like, and you're telling well, this to Seth MacFarlane? Oh, yeah, Seth MacFarlane and everybody. There's like 10 of the people that are all on the, on the, on the thing. And I said, well, can we just do like one of my props, like even the cups and string phone thing? And he's like, okay, but this is really good. Everyone loves it. I said, I know, but it's like, it's a pun. It's seesaw. It's like, it's, that's like legendary weird stuff. It's not, let me do one of my props. That, yeah. That, that, you know. And he said, well, I think, you know, one, we already made the animation. <laughs> and two, so I'm fucked. And then, <laughs> and then the second thing was, it was, uh, yeah. you know, they really wanted it. They said, this is, that's what, that's what makes it funny is it's so stupid. I said, okay, well, let's just do it. 
So we did it, and then I went back to L.A., and we, we redid it again and it, with him in the studio. And um, they were so jazzed about it. Like, he's like, trust me, this is, it's, it's not making you look like an idiot. It's going to be, and it did. It was great. People loved it. People yeah. still walk up to me and say Seesaw. <laughs> so, uh, but I was, I was definitely not digging it at the time. I was like, can we do something a little more? When Seesaw. George Carlin tells you that that's a great joke, how yeah. could you possibly ever take that out of your act? Yeah, well, no, you, 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 actually, I should put it back in. It's been out for a while. Yeah, I, I mean, when George Carlin says it's good, it's good. Yeah, that's true. Right? And those are the, those are the going back, digressing to the beginning of the interview about people when they would so make fun of you. It's like, you know, George Carlin thought it was funny, so I really don't care if, <laughs> if Jimbo from Arkansas thinks I, I suck. Yeah, seriously. I mean, you know, so. Who inspires you still? Who inspires you now? Uh, what to to, to, to what, yeah, like, in the in the field yeah. in the in the profession everybody I mean you know longevity is one of those things I find because uh, people every day I mean literally every day will say to me how long are you gonna do this and I always think well I'm young and they go but how long do you think and I'm like you know tomorrow is probably it and they're <laughs> like really I'm like no I don't have a I, I still have five years left on my on my deal here which is amazing life. by the way yeah what a deal um. But I don't look at it like I don't even. I feel like I'm. I don't feel like I'm even near retirement age. And I don't know what I would do. I, this is all I know how to do. I could do this or guess people's weight at the fair. Probably that's all I could do. I guess my what a great job that is, right? You go one ninety, yeah. and they go to, okay, next one sixty five. No, great day today. Yeah, great work. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't. I don't have any. I desire to. Uh, you know, and, and I think the answer to that question is. Uh, you know, when, when are you going to, how long are you going to do this? Is Everyone knows the answer to that. It's when you're no longer enjoying it mm -hmm. and no one else is enjoying it. Yeah. If, someone, if no one's showing up anymore and you're not digging it, it's probably time to, you know. But we're lucky in that regard because I've been watching all this. I've been really into this Formula One racing, which I found out by accident on Netflix. It was a special. I started watching it. Never, I mean, I remember as a kid watching, you know, Jockey Stewart and all those, but I never really... Yeah dug it and got into it. it was on a nascar you know and then all of a sudden i've been watching this thing and i and, and i'm looking at like the longevity of something like that I'm, I'm lucky and blessed that in comedy you know i might lose my some of my senses of things and timing and memory but not like in that where there's such a short period of time where they can oh, be yeah. the best driver at 200 miles an hour and ha and have the reflexes and there's a there's a there's a day where they <laughs> there's a day where they just uh they just I, you know, I, I lost it in turn two, and I, I don't know, I can't, you know, I, I have to retire. Um, same with football, but, you know, the sports ones. Oh, yeah, like when someone's age begins with a three in baseball. Yeah, you're like, oh, you know, he's say Tom Brady, you're right, 42, like, Jesus Christ, he's, he should be napping at halftime. But, um, but yeah, we're lucky yeah. in comedy in that sense. But there is, a, there, you know, I look at some of my, my idols in, in comedy that, that have gone on until they, the, 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 a week before they, you know, like Don Rickles was performing up until the very, very end. Yeah. I mean, uh, and had his wits. I, I was in a movie with him. I was very lucky to be in a movie with him, Dennis the Menace. And uh, I was in L.A. This is not too long before he passed away. And I, I was with my agent. My agent says, you got to go say hi to Don Rickles. And I was, Where, where's Don? I looked over, and he's sitting right there. And I said, well, you should come, because he's his agent, too. I said, you should go. He's, he said, no, this isn't an agent thing. He said, you, you could go over and say hi to him, and, mm. you, sh and you should. Yeah. And I said, well, of course I, I should, and I will. So I got up, and I walked over, and it was a whole bunch of people. It was like 20 people at his table. He's at the head of the table, and he was just staring at his potatoes or whatever. And I, uh, I walked up next to him, and I said, Don, I said, hey, uh, Carrot Top, I don't want to bother you, Carrot Top. And he, 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 he was so, he's like 90-something. And I said, hey, I don't want to bother you. I just want to say hi, it's Carrot Top. He says, really? You're carrot top? Like I couldn't see you coming from Ventura Highway? And I said, I, said, I don't want to bother you. He goes, you don't want to bother me? That's a little late, isn't it? And I said, oh, I, well, I'll, I'll leave you alone. Will, will, will you? And I said, yeah. And I said, I just want to know if you remember working with me in a movie. And he said, I've tried to forget everything you and I have ever done together. And it happened so fast. It was the most beautiful just rip. And then he gave me a big hug and did, you know, my cheeks. How am I, how, how's my, my name is still hot in Vegas? I said, of course you are. Oh, my, my name is still big in Vegas. I said, you're, 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 you are, you are, you're, come on, you're Don Rickles. You're the best thing. But that was right up in like, a, like maybe three weeks after that he had passed. Yeah. So he was still doing his shtick and still performing. And so wow. I, yeah. I, that, I, wow. I think of that, you know, when I, when people ask me how long I'm going to do this, I'm like, well, I hope I can, I can go until, you know, 
I can go until I don't want to go. Yeah. I just don't know. I watch these shows and I always think, what do people do when they retire? Well, you're still really passionate about this. Right. And you can tell that when you're on stage. But when I watch other people when they retire in certain things, when they're like, that's what I go back to Formula One or, 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 or sports or whatnot, I'm like, how, what must be going through their brain because they're still young? Let's say like a Peyton Manning. Sure. He's still young. But he can't bl- play the game anymore. Yeah. Does he lose? Does he lose half of his, 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 his self being his thing? Like he, what's his identity? Right. Yeah. Like he would go to the stadium every day. That's what he did. He'd follow films, and he would. And then on Sunday, he was. Everyone's cheering. So I think I get scared to death when I think I don't like just when I when I step off the stage and I just say that's my last show. I'm going to go sit on my boat in Florida. Yeah. Um, it scares me to, to think that there'll be a day where I, I, I wouldn't be on stage. I don't know what else I would, I don't, I need that. Yeah. Well, the difference between you and Peyton Manning is they know, they know they can only play till their 30 or late thirties, early forties. Yeah. But I think it probably sneaks up on them as well, where they just realize, oh crap. And that's, you know their, what? In, that's their entire identity. That's what I'm, right. That's what I mean. So we, we only see them in their, if we're going to use football as an example, in their NFL career, but they've been playing football since they were like four. That's what I mean. It's their whole thing. Yeah, that's what's you know, crazy. They, you about know, it. Jeff Gordon is a friend of mine. So let's say Jeff Gordon. You know, yeah, he started sure. when he was same four, four years, five years in go karts, and then he becomes maybe one of the biggest NASCAR drivers in the world. And that last race, I remember watching it, and I remember thinking, what's going through his brain? Because he's still oh, young. Oh God, yeah. But he's sitting there with his wife, and he's looking. He's like, this is the last time I'm going to climb in a car, and and be cheered on, and and it's just, and then then they they move up to the or you know Earnhardt, they move up into the booth, and maybe the Maybe they they are content. They're still in the sport in some capacity, but they must miss getting behind the wheel and that oh my engine. God. And you know what I mean? Like that, right? You know me. I have a show tonight, so I look forward to that. That that getting mic'd up and the music going and the crowds there and jazzed and trying a new joke. Yeah. What's your ritual before you step on stage? Lots of you drugs, have one. Lots of drugs. <laughs> um, free basing and yep. uh, you know. No, I I uh, I do. Yeah. <laughs> It's not, it's not, there's a there's, mound there's, of cocaine. It's not, a, it's not really, interestingly enough, there's not a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, some shows are different, like road shows or TV shows, there's a different mindset. The, the Vegas show I do every night, so there's the ritual basically is I get there early. I've never been there, I've always at the show two hours early because just you got to get into the boom, get the music going, get sound check, mm-hmm. um, yep. rehearse maybe a new joke. Um, and then, then you have a meet and greet, and then you have a, uh, yeah, you do a little shot of espresso and a little shot of crown, and cheers the, the our, my old crew come together, we kind of say, all right, let's don't fuck this up, <laughs> and just do the best we can, yeah. I see people, they get so excited when they meet you, and I think when people are in Vegas and they get to see a celebrity, they're like, oh my God. Yeah. So who was the last person that you were super excited to meet? Oh, wow. Well, there's a lot. I'm like a little child. I get, I'm, I'm, I'm always starstruck. People are like you, you've met everybody. I'm like, yeah. I know, but it's still, you know, it's still. There's moments where you're just like, okay, this, that's cool. Like we had Queen came to the show. Now that's pretty that's cool. That's pretty cool. So my buddy and I were talking about last night. You know, we're sitting there, and they said, you know, Queen's, you know, they're bringing Queen backstage, <laughs> and they have, you know, security. And then all of a sudden, you, you can, you can smell them from like down the hallway, the, 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 this royalty. You Do they see, smell pleasant? These, yeah, they smell beyond, ple- they smell like rock stars. They, they have the, this, you know, the velvet jack and the thing and they're just, they're quaffed perfectly and they're like they're English and like, Scott, it's a great show. And you're just like, holy shit, I'm talking to Queen. And they are blown away. They're like, how did you do that? That's amazing. It's so good. I'm like, you do know you're Queen, right? Like you are <laughs> Queen. But they're so humble and they were so great. Um, but yeah, you, I mean, I've met a lot of people, but 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 that was a that was a moment of of, of pretty coolness. Uh, I, I think one time I was in well, I don't think it was happening. I was in Aspen, and I'd gone I was gone I'd gone to the gym, and I was coming back from the gym, and I was there was no one out. It was like it was like seven thirty in the morning or something. I had gone to the gym, and then I was going to go snowboarding with Sean White. With Sean White, yeah, and uh, and uh, I'm I'm crossing the street and it's kind of foggy out and I'm looking and, I, and, and the night prior people said you know Jack Nicholson lives in Aspen and he's in town and da, da, da. so I'm, I'm looking across the street and literally I, I, I think that's Jack Nicholson and so uh, we start walking towards each other and he says top and I said Jack 
And he said, uh, and everyone was saying he's not a nice guy. Like at that dinner that night, like, hey, if you see him, you know. And he's like, Top or Topper. And I said, Jack. And he says, uh, Jesus Christ, what are you doing? I said, It's Jim. He says, You're not, sw- wait, you just came from the gym? And I said, Yeah, you're not sweating. And I said, What? He said, I just walked from my, my front door right there. And I'm, I'm, he, was, he, was, he was really was sweating. <laughs> he's like, I'm, I'm completely covered in sweat. And you just came from the gym and you don't have any sweat. I said, well, he goes, that's because you're, he kept saying, that's because you're young. And I said, no, he says, I'm fucking old, Top. He kept saying it, right? I'm fucking old. I said, you're not old. And he goes, no, I'm fucking old. And uh, he says, you tell that Jay Leno to go fuck himself. <laughs> and I said, what? wait, wait, why? Jay's, gr- Jay's great to me, like as we talked about. Jay's one of the best people in the world to me. Yeah. And he says, I don't like the way he talks to you. You do your, you do your thing, and, you're, and he knew my act. He's like, you do your you know, thing and the ice tray, whatever the fuck, and then he, he and then he, you come sit down and he goes to commercial break. He doesn't talk to you. That's bullshit. And I said, no, he's actually a really good guy. He says, well, you tell him to go fuck. So we had this really, really awesome conversation in the middle of Aspen, in this middle wow. of the street. And then that was prior to having cell phones. I was trying to call my friend, like, I just talked to Jack Nicholson for like 20 minutes in the middle of the street. Man. So that was kind of cool. That's very yeah, cool. Yeah, it was cool. That was kind of fun. What's the best advice you have for someone who's trying to be a comedian especially in this it's not easy to it wasn't easy to get on a stage over the last year well that's true that would be probably the most challenging thing in the world to be comic be a young comic last year Jeez. um unless they do a lot of these zoom things which i mean i guess people ex- taken over you know i would say the advice that i would give a young comic is, is the time on stage you have to find as much time as you can to to to, to hone what it is you're going to be talking about when they call your name um, and on an actual stage, not in front well, that's of what I think. mom I think and I, grandma. Right, no, on an actual stage in front of strangers that write, that do not yeah. like you. Um, and you hit the stage and they're like already judging you and you got to be not only funny, but you got to be on it, but you got you to gotta know what you're going to do for that, whether yeah. it's five minutes or ten minutes, what it is. And so I think, you know, a lot of people say, I'm going to be a comedian. I always like, okay, what's going to be your thing? What do you mean I'm going to be famous? I'm like, well, you, you don't just become famous. You, what's your craft? What's your, are you going to do political humor? Are you going to do uh, observational? Are you going to do props? Are you going to do music? Are you going to dance? Are you going to juggle magic? So it's important to figure out what it is that your, your shtick's going to be. And I was kind of lucky in, in the fact that I rolled right into what I did. Like, I, I, I wasn't originally a prop guy I just was telling jokes and then all of a sudden I realized I think I've got something with the visuals and I just started making it that my thing um not that it was easier but it it helped that I had I had what I what I wanted to do in my head I Mm -hmm. was going to be the prop guy and so I just started, you know, doing that and honing it. So when I got on stage, now trust me, I had a lot of shows that I didn't so do so well at. <laughs> That's part of being a comic or part of being anybody. You know, sure. I don't care what job you are, whether you're a mechanic or you're a rock star or a rock assigned. You're going to have bad days and bad shows and bad days at work. So, but I think just, a key you, thing there you said was is you're going to get judged. Like from the second you walk on stage. People are oh, already in seconds. They judge me even now. Even they're, deter- yeah, they're, they're, they're already looking like, oh, he looks like he's lost weight. Oh, his hair is different. He's got like green hair. You know, they are. They're already. They're already making thousands of uh, yeah. of, 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 of assumptions in their own brain, or whether they're if they're new, whether they're even gonna like me right away. They might not like my voice. They might not yeah. the way I looked. Oh, I see. You know, is there? They're not. I had these shoes on the stage. And all these they are kept, big shoes. All they kept talking about was my stupid shoes, though, right? So it's like. It's, I like your Balenciagas. And I was like, what's that? And she's like, you're Balenciagas. And I said, okay, you're definitely a shoe guy because no one knows what Balenciagas are. There's a brand. But then she no goes, I like, I like them. And finally I said, okay, are we going to talk about my fucking shoes the whole time? We're gonna, like, we're gonna, I, I mean, I have other things planned than just walking around in my shoes. <laughs> so it was kind of, kind of got old after a while. And then finally I just took my shoe off and I said, let's just pass the goddamn thing around and everybody can hear. Get your kids. I mean, look at it. It's a great shoe. Shoes. It is a great shoe. Yeah. They are, I'm not going to lie. It's they, bedazzled I, too. I, I, yeah, I, I thought right. I could mess around. You bedazzled it, I, or it came like that? No, I have a friend that did these. The, I, I usually do mine, but these were so these were so expensive. I didn't want to mess them up, <laughs> so I told my guy that's a. So you got a bedazzle guy. I have a prote- professional bedazzler guy that did them for me, um, <laughs> but I normally do them myself if they're just crap shoes. But these were these were a little pricey, so I said I don't want to mess these things up. I had to have them done right. So. I think the best thing about you, especially with you taking off your shoe and showing us your bedazzled shoe. <laughs> Is that you, I'll take my pants off, too. I don't care. I mean, that's up to you. At least the shot ends right here. <laughs> the thing I love about you is you embrace who you are. And 
You don't seem to care what other people think about you. That I never have. That goes back to being a kid because I got picked on all the time and I used to say, you know what, I, I don't honestly, yeah, no. I dress like I do, I wear makeup, I, got, I paint my nails, I mean, I do everything, but I don't do it for anybody else. I just me, like, why are your nails painted? I'm like, because I like, I like to paint my nails. Hmm. Why? I'm like, because it's, it's... They're not painted just, right now? No, they're not now, but usually they are, but, but I'm saying, like, I just, I just don't, uh, I don't even think about it. Just yeah. that's part of my, yeah. you know, that's part of my thing. And I don't, I don't, yeah, I definitely don't care. I really don't care. <laughs> and people always stare, I, I, you know, that comes with the job, too. I just that that is a difficult quality for people to learn. I feel. Oh, like. to be yourself at anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I definitely have embraced being who I like. Yeah, I don't hide. I just be my I, my crazy self. But I just do it to be my <laughs> crazy self. I don't try to be crazy. You know, be like I get away with it because because I'm probably who I am. Yeah, you I, know. I love it. They they expect me to have. You know, they're like. Why do you not have? Why do you not have some shit in your hair? Why do you not have yeah. painted nails? Why do you? You know? Why don't you? Yeah. So, but I, I can I can feel this. Like in our conversation here, I feel your energy because it's okay. so authentic. Feeling yours too. This is getting creepy. Okay. And your pants. Are yeah, I the, the yeah. I just did a thing the other day, and they're like <laughs> ESPN. They're like, you look like Steven Tyler, and I'm like, I do look like Steven Tyler. Oh yeah. <laughs> but I got I that was, that was one of those guys. I was one of those guys um, that. Uh, I remember, well, I've known him now, friends, but, but I was walking through the airport in, it was either Los Angeles or Las Vegas. It was a flight to one of the two. And I was walking through the airport, and I look up, and I see this guy that literally looks like Steven Tyler. But I mean, like, not just looks like him. Like, he's in a video, music video. And he's got scarves and things and shit. And, is, uh, you know, it's like, it's Steven Tyler. And I'm like, Dude, and everyone's, you know, I go, Steven. He said, oh, hey, what's up, Kirtan? And I said, I, are you shooting a video? And he goes, no. I, and I was like, that's so awesome that you just walked through the airport like that. Like, it's, it, you think that's like just a stage thing. No, yeah. that's how he walks through the bonds, you know, and, and, and CVS. Like, that's just, and that's what I, I, I never forgot that. I said, that's, I, w- I want to be that guy. I, you know, what I wear, how I wear on stage is how I, I go off stage. I, I, I don't, I don't turn into care top. I just, yeah. I just, you know, but, um, I always loved that. I always dug the fact that he was just walking through, uh, Walgreens like Steven Tyler. He said, yeah. well, I am Steven Tyler. So it's not a, it's not a facade. That's really him on stage. Like he's a nut. Yeah. I want to be super respectful of your time because you've got your show tonight, but this has been great. Yeah. Thanks. So this has awesome been fun. Yeah. I, I love, uh, I love, uh, being able to talk about, uh, this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah me too. you don't get a chance to talk about your career much, you know. What's the I so I end every interview with the same question cuz I start and end every day saying out loud three things that I'm grateful for. So what are three things in your life right now that you're grateful for? Oh, definitely grateful for my health. I'm lucky that I have my health cuz that's the most important thing in the world. Uh, my hair. Definitely have lucky I have hair. I have my health. Health um, in your got, hair. I, and I've got family, you know, my family lives here in uh, in um, in Las Vegas, so I get to see my family. Uh, I got my little dog that goes to work every night with me. It's my little princess. She comes to the every show. What's her name? Boo Bear. Boo Bear. She comes to the show every night. She's uh, she's 17, so she's she still she still runs up to the stage every night and for sound check. Um, and I'm grateful for, definitely for the longevity of my career. I mean, you know, like I said, we've talked about um, it, it, it. It's amazing to have people, fans that let me do this this many years. You know. Yeah, because uh, you don't think about it until people ask. You know, like the, like this in my 16th year coming up just at the Luxor, people are like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, well, it's 35. I started in 1985, so it's like 35 years total." So you think about that a lot more as you get older. Like I remember, I remember being in my dorm room, literally drawing that logo, like, like it was yesterday. It was 1985. Wow. You know, and going into the, and going up on stage and that night and doing i think i ended the i think i ended the show um i took my shirt off and i and i played the rocky music and i drank an egg and it had it made no sense i just said we got to leave this on something fun so hit it no, I, I hit i had to hit the cassette thing i didn't have anybody play it I hit dun 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 dun, dun, dun. People are like what the f-? and I just an egg and I uh, I I swallowed the egg. Well, I remember I drank it, 
And everybody went, what? And then I went, what are you, crazy? <laughs> and then I walked off with, like, you know, yeah, with, I, I, oh, I had oil. I had, I had to take the shirt off, rubbed oil on, because it was right when Rocky came out. So it, was, it, it made sense now, I'm yeah. thinking about it. But it was like, what? And, and, and it killed. And then, that, and then forever, not ever, but for a while, I, that, would, that would be my ending. I would do the Rocky thing. And then it ended up becoming a bit of my show. I'd bring up somebody, this is way later. I would invite somebody up from the audience and I would say, uh, who wants to drink a beer with me or challenge and slam a beer? And there's always a thousand people that want to do that. So I'd bring some guy up and I'd give him his beer and I'd say, we're going to do an egg. We're going to slam an egg together and then we'll drink, we'll slam the beer. And it used to be, dump, 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 and the thing, because it was in my act for so long, but I couldn't do the, take the shirt off. So I just did the, we both did the egg, looked each other in the eyes, it was like, let's go, boom. When I, every time I'd do it, they would do it, but then they would, they were like, like, you could see them just like, and then I'd spit it out, and they'd swallow theirs, and like, you, what? You, you know, you cheated me. So one time in Iowa, I was doing, uh, oh God, it was like a 3,000 seat, like, venue. It was Valentine's Day. And uh, I said, who wants to slam a beer with me? And this guy comes up. We do the whole thing. Boom. He drinks the beer. And right as he, right as he slammed the egg, I see his face instantly turn white, like, <laughs> like something bad. White, green, blue. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he it projectile. I mean, I'm talking all over me, oh. all over my rug, right? Oh. And the bucket that I had for our beers. And I'm like, it's Valentine's Day, right? I mean, dude. So... 3,000 people, uh, probably 100 people started throwing up. Oh, because, my God. Because, yeah, chain reaction. Yeah. And you're, uh, bruh, yeah. Oh, uh. no. And I said, you're just, now no one's going to get laid tonight on Valentine's <laughs> Day. Nobody, including myself. I was covered in his vomit. And I had to finish the hour, like an hour left of the show with the covered oh in his vomit. So God. I think the egg bit went away after that. Yeah, I would guess so. I am the egg man. This has been such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Likewise. Thank you for, for having me in. You have a nice staff here. Everyone's great here. Yeah. And if anybody that's listening to this or watching this is in Vegas. Yeah, I'm going. Here at the Luxor. Yeah, I'm going. Pretty much every day. Yeah, every day but Sundays. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. You got it. Thanks. Appreciate buddy. it. Cheers.